So apparently some trail signs have become scratching posts for bears. There's no bears up here. I've only seen these once before. Good morning. It is September 16th, 2019, and I'm here at the trailhead of the Nana Taki course going up Mount Iwate. This waterfall is really popular in the wintertime. From late January through early March even, it's frozen, and you can snowshoe or hike with knee-high boots out to here, so you can basically stand on the pool down there and see it from up close and it is really spectacular. I went on a mountain biking trip last weekend. That guy who was leading the thing had a special bear repellent call. I thought I would demonstrate that. That wasn't it. He would say, ooh, 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 really loud. And when he did that once, there was actually a bear in a tree, maybe 20, 30 meters away from us and it uh, slid down and ran off. So I know for a fact it works. It makes them go away. Let's try that together. Everyone at home and on the train. Good. While we're on the topic of bears in Japan, I'd like to give you some bear common sense. The bear necessities of hiking, as it were. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> Basically, unlike um, American black bears, you don't want to challenge them. Back in the day, my parents were avid hikers, and they, on a few occasions, had run-ins with American black bears, where they would just take their paddles or pots and pans, bang, make yell, wave them around, intimidate them. Don't do that in Japan. The Asiatic black bear, or Skinoaguma is a bear of a different variety. These bears, you just want to stop, look at them. Eye contact is fine. They're not dogs. Don't do anything. They'll run away. They'll leave first. The worst thing you can do is turn around and run. If you turn around and run with an Asiatic black bear, they're very likely to chase you down and injure you severely. I've only encountered bears in the mountains when I was foraging for wild vegetables or mushrooms. And in every case where I encountered them not near a road, by the time I noticed the bear, or bears plural, as once it was a adult, two cubs, they were already moving away in the opposite direction. As long as you're making noise, hence everybody's got the bear bell, some people carry radios, other people will go, woo, woo, woo. As long as you're broadcasting your presence to the bears, they're not gonna come near you, they're not interested. The risk comes from when you're alone, early in the morning or late in the evening, being very quiet, and suddenly you're there within a meter or two of them. Then there are many reported cases where they'll take a whack at you and put you in the hospital. These ones will not eat you, but they will permanently disfigure you. Seriously, no joke. This is another one of my favorite spots here up the Nanataki Trail. Waterfall, sulfur bubbling up, that nice faint hint of rotten eggs, mountain ridges on both sides. Nanataki course is just epic. When I think about the Nanataki course, I think about walking along a sulfuric river with mists rising along huge cliffs, waterfalls abound. It is long and grueling if you're a novice hiker, but oh so worth it. Just leave early in the morning. Here we have reached Ojigokudani, or the Great Hell Valley. This is the Great Hell Valley. I'm lost for words. You've got to come and experience this. We've now crossed the Ojigokudani, the Great Hell Valley, and come out the other side, and now we will go through the flower field, the Hanabatake. These flowers right here are called bindo. I know that. 
because I'm slowly trying to learn the 170 varieties of flowers that grow in the alpine areas around Hachimantai for a guide certification. We are now entering Hanabatake, the flower field. So there's the summit, all a destination at last. Our brains are literally hardwired to be soothed and eased and to dissolve stress when we're surrounded by glorious natural green environments. So apparently some trail signs have become scratching posts for bears. Looks pretty clearly like bear claw marks. Three kilometers further to the summit and hopefully we too will not become bear scratching posts. We're still going up the Nanataki course. We passed the Hanabatake and we're on our final approach, I hope, to the eighth station where the lodges are. And man, it's more tiring than I remember it being. We're both uh, pretty drenched in sweat, kind of exhausted. This is pretty consistent climbing. Oh well, almost there. Another cloudy, misty day on the summit. I always say that I love it when it's like walking in another world. It's got a visibility about 10 meters. Sitting in a cloud. There's no bears up here. I'm here now on the summit again from the Nanataki trailhead, including all of my stopping and uh, talking at the camera and uh, relaxing and having lunch, including all of those things. It was three hours and 50 minutes to reach the summit via Nanataki. Didn't encounter any bears and may you have the same fortune. I actually just lost track of which direction is which. It's like we're in an island in the middle of the clouds up here on the summit today. Look around me. This is, this is another world. The mouth of the volcano in here is just a precipice into nothingness. The mists have parted a little bit. So we have just departed the summit and here now we are with the clouds leaving, the mists parting. That is a Japanese saro. I believe they are a protected natural wildlife treasure. I've only seen these once before. I didn't know they came to the summit. And here he is. I'm really excited. I've never seen a Japanese saro, a kamoshka, up here on the summit in the crater of Mount Iwate. I guess they must be eating some grass or something around here, but I rarely see them in the wild. I've seen more bears than, than saro, so what a treat. We're now on our way down, and the way down we're taking is down Umagaishi. Because there's two of us, um, we have two cars, and so we parked one car at the trailhead of Umagaishi and then drove the rest of the way to the Nanataki Trail. So we get to have different um, views on the way up and way down, and also it's much shorter to go down Umagaishi than it is to go down Nanataki, so we don't have quite as strenuous a trip. This is gonna be a long enough trek. I find the most dangerous part of hiking Mount Iwate is the descent. You are going down slippery, gravelly slopes and it's really easy to slip, especially when your muscles are exhausted and you're prone to just space out from being all around worn out. My advice to everyone is to have some chocolate or whatever focusing substance you like to use that's permissible by Japanese law and uh, be very focused and aware on your way down to avoid injury because it's really easy to hurt yourself, even for experienced hikers. With that, I'm going to turn this camera off and focus on the way down, on my footwork. So we came all the way down the Umagaishi Trail and are exhausted. It was a 16.8 kilometer hike today. We did it in uh, six hours even, um, including lunch, breaks, uh, at any rate, if you've got two cars, this is a great way to do Mount Iwate. Everybody take care about the bears and uh, hopefully you'll see a Japanese sero, a kamushika, if you're lucky. Again, please leave a comment, um, subscribe, share um, the channel with other people if you think they'd find it interesting. I'll be doing some more urban stuff around Morioka soon, around restaurants and food, craft beer and sake. 
but um, my primary love is still the mountains, so I'll still be scattering these videos in as much as I can. See you in the trails.